Welcome to the Electrical and Electronic Engineering Lecture Series. Your anchor person is Professor Michael C. Ndinechi. Our topic today is Basic Concepts of Electronic Communications. In this lecture, we shall be considering different aspects involved in the transmission and reception of signals between points in an electronic communication system. A typical communication system consists of very many and diverse parts, which contribute in one way or the other to establish links between two points referred to as source and destination, as shown in Fig. 1. Communication systems vary in overall forms and sophistication and depend on the specific communication method adopted. If you look at Fig. 1, see typical source, medium, destination. This is evidence in the evolution of electrical communication field from the simple wire telegraphy of Morse in 1837 to the satellite communication links and most recently the information superhighway that is the internet. In many, it may therefore be appropriate to consider the significant milestones in this evolutional trend of electronic communication as shown in the selected chronology given below, year and event. The race started in 1826 by the discovery of the Ohm's law, followed 1837 by Morse telegraphy. In 1864, Maxwell predicted electromagnetic radiation, continues. Um, 1887, Henry Chase verified Mike Maxwell's theory, then followed by Strouger, step-by-step -step telephone switch. Marconi patented a complete wireless telegraph system. Fleming invented diode. V. De Forest invented amplifier. Bell system completed transcontinental telephone with electronic repeaters. 1927 saw the beginning of TV broadcasting. 1938, development of radar systems, 1945, microwave systems, 1948, invention of transistor, and so on, until 1975 to 1992, the International Computer Communication Network, direct broadcast satellites, eight remote sensing, maritime communication, satellite communications, Teleconferencing, integrated services, digital network, email technologies all came into being. In 1993 to date, we are experiencing the information superhighway that is the internet. Element of an electronic communication system, so the merits of communication system notwithstanding, the basic functional elements may for convenience be configured as interconnected building blocks as shown in Fig. 2 below. Disregarding for the moment the transducers, the communication system may be assumed of having three main parts, that is the transmitter, the transmission channel, and the receiver. We'll be looking at all these bits by bit in future. Although the configuration is suggestive of a system in which the sources and the receiver are remote from each other, in practice, these two parts of the system may be at the same locality as the case of radar system. If you look at the complete building block, you see the source, the input transducer to the transmitter, then through the channel, to the receiver, then the output transducer to the output device. But importantly, along the channel, you have problems associated with noise, interference, distortion, and fading. And the source refers to where the input signal is generated from. Typically, there are four sources of input signals from communication systems. They include speech, voice, music, picture, computer system, that is data. Because there are many possible information sources, including men and machines, there are correspondingly different forms of messages.
But regardless of the exact form, these messages may be termed analog or digital. Example of analog message is the speech, which varies continuously with time. A typical example of digital system is the digital computers. In almost all cases, the message input to the transducer is not electrical, and therefore, the role of the transducer is to transform this message into a form most stable for the communication system in use. For electrical communications, the stable form is either a time-varying voltage or a time-varying current, which is now referred to as a signal. Now, the, the transmitter serves to couple the message signal to the channel, although in a few cases, the transducer output may be coupled directly to the channel, it is often necessary to modulate the signal from the input transducer with a carrier wave. Modulation in this sense means some systematic variations of the carrier, such as its amplitude, frequency, or phase as a function of the message signal. Modulation may be continuous wave or pulse modulation. The classification depends on the type of carrier wave employed. Whatever the form of modulation, however, it is necessary that the receiver be in a position to perform the complementary process of demodulation. In addition to modulation, the transmitter serves to filter, amplify, and then couple the modulated signal to the, to the channel or some other devices. The channel serves as the electrical connector between the transmitter and the receiver. It comes in different forms, which may include a pair of wires, quasar cables, radio waves, laser beam, etc. A feature of all these channels is that they introduce some level of degradation to the transmitter signal as a result of a variety of causes. In general, the degradation may be in form of attenuation or fading, which reduces the signal strength, distortion, interference, and noise, which alter the signal shape. Now, distortion occurs if the system responds to the desired signal is not perfect. Interference, on the other hand, is the contamination of the signal usually man-made, which has the form similar to that of the wanted signal. Noise is the random and unpredictable electrical noise signal arising from natural causes both internal and external to the system. Noise in communication systems can be classified into three categories depending on the source, viz. Atmospheric, man-made, and extraterrestrial noise. Atmospheric noise results primarily from spurious radio waves, which include voltages that impinge in the antenna from natural sources of disturbances generally called static. Static is caused by lightning discharges in thunderstorms and other natural electrical disturbances occurring in the atmosphere. Atmospheric noise becomes less severe at frequencies above 30 MHz because of two reasons. Such frequencies are limited to line of sight propagation and the nature of generating this noise is such that very little of it is created in the very high frequency range and above. Extraterrestrial noise are those resulting from space objects like the sun. They include solar noise and cosmic noise. Man-made noise are those resulting from high voltage power lines, electric motors, ignition keys, etc. The receiver receives the transmitted signal via the antenna. Receivers can be generally classified as tuned radio frequency or superheterodyne receivers. Whichever the receiver employed, it is most important function is to demodulate the modulated signal from the transmitter before sending it to the output. The output transducer serves to convert the signal back to its original Form. Now, some basic definitions we'll be meeting in electronic communications they include one, fading. This is the term used to refer to the phenomenon where a transmitted signal gradually disappears. 
It can be described as the loss of signal as seen by the receiver. It is caused by quite a number of factors and this is why every signal has its limit in terms of the distance it can travel. Fading can be ameliorated by the introduction of fade margin. Interference is the term used to refer to the phenomenon where a signal becomes contaminated by man-made effects. Interference is caused when the interference signal is similar and becomes nearly equal in strength to the wanted signal. Attenuation refers to a reduction in the strength of a signal in which a signal becomes less effective. It is also caused by quite a number of factors including noise. One thing we must note is that when a signal is attenuated, its strength begins to reduce. Modulation. Modulation means some systematic variation of the carrier wave such as its amplitude, frequency, and phase as a function of the message signal. Modulation could may be continuous wave, pulse modulation. The classification depends on the type of carrier wave employed. Whatever the form, the modulation is necessary that the receiver be in a position to perform a complementary process of the modulation. Thank you for listening to this lecture. Like, share, and subscribe so that you get the other versions of, more especially, part two of this lecture. Thank you.